Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is about a paper in Nature Journal by scientists from UC Berkeley who have been trying to decipher the reason behind sudden large dark spots that are sometimes visible over Jupiter's poles. Finally, they have the answer. Tornadoes caused by the magnetic field of Jupiter. Let me break this down for you. So these dark spots, which are basically caused by haze or a concentration of aerosols in the atmosphere of Jupiter, were first observed by the Hubble telescope in the 1990s. They have some unique properties. They only appear at the poles of Jupiter for weeks on end. And according to the Berkeley scientists, they occur more in the South Pole than the North Pole. Now think of them as the northern and southern lights that we see on Earth. But here's where they differ from Earth's lights. Earth's lights are caused by charged particles or electrons, while Jupiter's polar spots are caused by a vortex, which is a tornado led by the interaction between Jupiter's magnetic field and its atmosphere. Also, another key feature is that these dark spots on Jupiter can only be seen in ultraviolet light. Next up, a startling story from the University of Columbia researchers who have published in the PNAS journal on 26 November. The research shows how while temperatures are rising everywhere, there are certain hot spots, heat wave hot spots around the world which have experienced extreme heat waves, the ones that are beyond the realm of regular global warming. Now, by using data from heat waves over the past 65 years across the world, Columbia scientists have been able to identify exactly where these regions are and they have marked them in bright red on a global map to help us better understand why these regions experience heat in a way that mystifies even climate models. All of Europe, which saw devastating heat waves in the last two summers, falls under these hotspots. North and Central India too are coloured red, as are the other Asian countries like China, Japan and Korea. The paper says that information about these hotspots would help us better our climate models and therefore help with mitigation measures that are needed against these heat waves. Our next story might seem small at first, but it is supposed to have huge implications for the study of immunity responses in humans and animals. It's the discovery of a fungus that resides in the gut of wild mice, Cape intolopaceae. A paper in Nature, published on 27 November, talks about how this is the first natural commensal species of fungi found in mice. A commensal species is a type of fungus that lives in a host animal and benefits from it. It's a type of symbiotic relationship that commensal species share with their hosts. And in the case of Cape intolopaceae, the scientists flagged that the presence of this fungus in a mouse helps develop immunity in the mouse from certain types of pathogens. That means that the fungus can now be studied as a model organism to understand how gut immunity has evolved in general in mice and also in other animals. Finally, for a final story, let's check in at Busan, South Korea where the fifth and final meeting of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee, Inc. 5, of the Global Plastics Treaty is underway. The meeting, which brings together all signatories of the United Nations Environment Assembly's Global Plastic Treaty, is expected to negotiate a resolution or a legally binding instrument that will put an end to plastic pollution. The motivations are many. 99% of plastics are produced from fossil fuels. The product's life cycles are endless, they pollute our oceans and land alike, and they find their way into our food, our water, air, and eventually our bodies. Inc. 5 is expected to end on 1st December, with countries and NGOs around the world hopeful that a global treaty will be achieved. India, on its part, has proposed a multilateral fund in place so that developing countries can get technical and financial support to transition away from plastics to more environment-friendly technologies. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.